Good evening once again. I'm Keith Ranford. And this studio door here at 7 Broadcast Plaza really says it all. Irv, Rick, and Tom. Three decades of setting the bar when it came to local news here in western New York, southern Ontario, Pennsylvania, wherever you were. So many people grew up watching this trio. Tonight, we celebrate the life and times of Irv Weinstein. Without further ado, let's run that old, iconic newscast open. It's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Western New York, number one newscast. Eyewitness News with Irv Weinstein. Here is Irv Weinstein. Coming tonight's eyewitness news. Coming tonight's eyewitness news. Coming tonight's eyewitness news. Sky 7 joins the search. Mario says, Stan is my man. Coming tonight's eyewitness news. What else? The weather. Coming tonight's eyewitness news. A stubborn house fire in Niagara County that has kept smoke eaters hopping. A little blaze busters rolled up before dawn today to battle. Officials say it was the work of firebugs. Smoke eaters moved out in the pre-dawn hours. The piece of a papal appearance shattered by gunfire. According to the company, uh, things have been far from a honeymoon. Ooh. Thank you. Ooh. Freezing. Oh, my. I'm feeling chill. We'll be right back. <laughs> Finally, 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 if your boss writes miserable memos or unreadable reports, here's your chance for revenge. Now, act one of tonight's late show, Lady Ice. Don't touch your dial. Oh, there was only ever one Irv. He stood about five foot seven, but when it came to television in Buffalo, no one stood taller than Irv Weinstein. He was a giant in our newsroom in the golden age of television news, a time when most of us only had a couple of channels to watch and families actually sat down each night together to watch the news of the day. Now, since Irv left us on Tuesday this week, we have heard from so many people, so many stories from people out there who said that Irv really was another member of the family at the dinner table and in the living room. And when it was time for the news, a voice you needed to hear before you went to bed every night. His wife, Elaine, daughters Beth and Rachel, and son Mark said goodbye to Irv today with a funeral service held near his home in Southern California. Tonight, we will remember Irv with some of the people who knew him so well. But first, a look back at the man who was a Buffalo original. Everyone knew him. All you had to say was Irv. Here is Irv Weinstein. Coming tonight's eyewitness news. Coming tonight's eyewitness news. Coming tonight's news. And that's the way he began the broadcast each night for 34 years here on Channel 7. He wasn't exactly a matinee idol. He didn't have a smooth, deep voice. But when paired with Rick Azar and Tom Joles, it was television magic. Irv was the headliner from 1964 through 1998. And for most of those years, the number one rated newscast in Western New York. Hey, that's Irv Weinstein, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Hey, I watch you every night, Irv, him too. That story on Channel 7 Eyewitness News film. Shut up, will you? Hey, Irv, I love that little joke you do every night before I hit the sack. Oh, I gotta tell you, Irv, you do it right. You do some good job. <laughs> Eyewitness News with Irv Weinstein. Some good job. He was born Irwin Weinstein in Rochester in 1930. He got into radio as an actor, and then moved on to jobs in Iowa and West Virginia, and then landed in the news department at KB Radio here in Buffalo in 1958. And then a few years later, he moved over to the new TV station in town. My wife is always asking me, when are you going to grow up? And I tell her, never. Apparently, the 22 caliber killer has struck again. Irv was famous for his use of the alliteration, those pistol-packing punks, and the Buffalo Blaze Busters. People remembered those lines, especially since it was the golden age of television. No cable, no satellite, no internet, just a few stations over the air. It should make a lot of people happy, especially those South Buffalo residents who've been long-suffering victims of those two dreaded diseases, dirty wash and flaming eyeballs. 
interviews. From 1965 on, there was no looking back. Irv, Rick, and Tom were in their prime. They made up one of the longest-running TV news teams in the country. 24 years together, when Rick finally became the first to retire in 1989. Irv stayed for another nine years, and then wrapped things up on New Year's Eve, finally, 1998. Finally, 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 finally. I can never thank you enough. You made all of my dreams come true. May all of yours come true as well. Thank you, and good night. Irv spent his retirement years with his children in Southern California, but then in March of 2016, he was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. We went out to see him one more time. It was a special time, wasn't it? It was a special and I was so damn lucky to have been a part of it. All right, what, what do you want to tell the people back home? What do you want to say to them? I want to thank the viewers, the people of Western New York for giving me a life that I could never have dreamed of. We really miss you, and don't forget that we all love you, Earth, okay? Thank you, okay. We have so many great memories. Good evening once again. Joining us here in the studio tonight to take a, a little walk down memory lane are three people who knew Irv very well. First off, former AM Buffalo co-host for many years, Cindy Abbott is with us tonight. Also a longtime Channel 7 behind the scenes man. We used to call him Mr. TV. John DeShula was with us this evening. And former Channel 7 sports director, Bob Kaczynski, the Polish prince of Niagara <laughs> County, is also here. It's a pleasure to have all of you with us tonight. Now, before we all talk together and, and go over all those memories we have about Irv, it's only fitting that first we hear about or from the two gentlemen who sat next to Irv for more than 30 years, Rick Azar and Commander Tom. He was just such a wonderful guy to work with. He had, we had our moments of laughs and we had our moments of sadness together, but we were, we were definitely a family, Keith, and it's something that will never happen again, probably, in the business. And you remember so many things about both of them, you know, and especially Irv now. That, and I, as a matter of fact, right this very minute, I have a huge three-person picture of Irv and I with Tom, and I'm looking at it, and he's looking right at me. And it brings back such a flood of thankfulness that we spent that time together. Now, the last time we saw Irv, Rick, and Tom all together was about three years ago in 2014 when they reunited for the Giants of Buffalo series. It was held here in town at the History Museum, and Giants they were, forming the longest-running TV anchor team in history. This would be Irv's last public appearance here in Buffalo. Now, Cindy John and Bob were here tonight to talk about our, our colleague Irv, and it's hard to believe that uh, he has left us so quickly. John? Well, you know, I'll, I'll start by saying, uh, you, you, Keith, I think summed it up best that even though we knew this was coming with this brave battle with ALS, it did shake everybody to the core, uh, everybody in the community who loved him so much and everybody here at WKBW and, uh, you know, hats off to you and Aaron and the team here at Eyewitness News who've done the heart compassionate, heartfelt coverage. And, uh, but uh, one, of the, one of the stories I'll share with Irv, you know, being behind the scenes, one of our roles was to promote Irv. And you may remember, and I, I think there's probably a, an Irv mask that might be uh, in the building. This Irv mask was the brainchild of our general manager at the time, Paul Cassidy, uh, who decided that this would complement a promo that you may see later on. Uh, we were tasked with, how do you promote Irv Weinstein to a younger audience? And uh, after a news consultants meeting, it was at a Bison's game, and uh, that rock and roll song came on, da -na -na -na, and then the cheer part. And da -na -na -na, Irv. Yeah, we've got some of that coming yeah, up. Yeah, a lot of kids were Irv Weinstein for Halloween that year. That, <laughs> absolutely, and Sue Dobmeyer did a great job with that. So, you know, just one of the ways. Yeah. And Irv was such a great guy to work with on so many levels because even though 
he was the news guy and had that you know tough exterior. He he really was great to great to work. Cindy, with. he was such a part of not just our lives here at the TV station, but of this entire community, wasn't he? Well, and you know the, the most often asked question that I get is when people hear that I worked at Channel Seven, they'll say, "Well, did you know Irv? Did you know Rick? Did you know Tom?" And I think that you know they they talk about it was the number one newscast, but it was one of the highest rated local newscasts in the United States. And what was so interesting interesting about it. I remember coming here and I'd gone to Syracuse and they'd tell you what you're supposed to do to be on the air and I was in my early 20s. And here you had this man who sounded like a Shakespearean actor, you know, these stentorian tones that what he, he was authentic. He did it his way. He did have an acting background so that he spoke beautifully. He enunciated. And if, you know, in a day in which we all try to come up with formulas as to how do we make this one how do you look? How do you do this? He broke all the rules, but he was authentic. And I think that's when you look at things that are, uh, that are really successful. What happens with people is they knew he was one of them. He had a connection with the And audience. he got where they were coming yeah. from. Yeah. All right, before we get to Bobby, Irv was serious a lot of the time, especially when it came to getting the facts straight for a broadcast. But also, we like to have fun a lot. Bobby, remember this? That takes care of it from our weather outside. Folks, on the job training, who knows where I'll pop up next. Irv? Bob, that was great. That was one of the most you interesting <laughs> weather shows I've ever seen. Tom doesn't have much to worry about. Well, thank you very much. Uh, in terms of his future. But no, that was super. That was great. Thanks well, a million, Bob. You know, if it wasn't me, you were next. Never. Never, Bob. Thank you. That's when, uh, when Tom, I think he was out at the fair, wasn't he? And yeah, he they lost the a live shot. Had... Yeah. They lost a live shot, which meant, and Mark Cooper, who used to be a sports guy here, could not do sports, so I ran in into the anchor chair, and I did the sports cast. And we went to break, and I turned to Irv. I said, well, if they can't get the live shot, and I just did sports, who's going to do weather? And Irv just stared at me, and he says, I'm going to do weather. <laughs> and just then our news director ran in the studio and said, Bob, get outside, you're doing the weather. I'd never done the weather. I used to <laughs> mock Tom and for how was, easy it was. That but. was pretty much the end for you, right? It was downhill <laughs> yeah. after that. that was mm -hmm. Wasn't there a snake bob that was going across <laughs> the, the uh, Yeah, the, uh, yeah. I call it the snake going across North America, which you could hear Irv laughing outside in the studio. But, you know, I had a great relationship with Irv because we both got a kick out of each other, which unfortunately, once Irv realized he could make me crack up on the air, <laughs> it was all over. Whenever yeah. I anchored with Irv, he would do things off camera to crack me up. And that, most times he was successful. That's what he did that night in the clip we just showed when I lost it. First time I think I've ever lost it on the air. Anyway, we have many stories to share coming up here on 7 Eyewitness News tonight. But first, a look at uh, one of those memorable Irv promos. This one from 1985. They turn to Irv Weinstein on Channel 7's Eyewitness News. Are there any schools or parks where that's on site? That's Irv. Because no one knows Western New York like Irv does. Is that time in Orleans or not? Yes, girl. And that's what makes Irv Weinstein the best in the business. Uh, who's a good contact in the community development office? Ask her. So if you want to know what's new, ask her. Check with her. Hey, anyone know how to get tomato sauce out of a tie? Ask her. Right. Irv Weinstein, weeknights on Eyewitness News.
That's another Irv promo we ran on the air here back in 1995. We're joined once again here in the studio, if you're just joining us, three longtime members of the Channel 7 family. Cindy Abbott from AM Buffalo is here, Bob Kaczynski, our former sports director, and John DeShulo, man about town, I guess. <laughs> now, if there was one event every year that was near and dear to Irv's heart, it was the Variety Club Telethon that we do every year and continue to do, and Irv would do anything for the kids. Now, someone has said that this is my song because it describes what I look like. Ready? Here we go. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip me over and pour me out. He really loved the telethon, he did. didn't he? He, he did. He was very passionate. I, I, you know, and Keith, he openly wept on television. And this was not some stunt to solicit people to call. He openly wept because he cared for the children. And, uh, and I, before we have to end this telethon segment, Bob, there's a great story that he had about one of the, the, the co-stars that one year. Well, the one year, Soupy Sales, the iconic Soupy Sales, was uh, one of the guest hosts of the telethon. And towards the end of the telethon, Soupy and Irv were vying for airtime. And uh, both thought they were the main host, and uh, which ended up resulting in both running to then Steve Zappia, the uh, producer, <laughs> <laughs> complaining about the other one hogging camera time. So that prompted Irv to get everyone to start chanting, thank you, Soupy, thank you, Soupy. And Soupy Sales returned it with thank you, Buffalo, which became one of my favorite moments in the history of the telethon. Yeah, he really loved it. And, and they all came to the telethon a few years ago. Uh, and I think Irv last year donated $25,000 right. to he the did. telephone he did. And, and uh, thousands of dollars before that. Another great memory. Now, uh, let's see. When we come back, Irv's lasting impact on our waistlines. He really liked <laughs> his food. When 7 Eyewitness News continues. The first 500 fans, as you saw, got official Bob Kaczynski look like glasses. And that is eyewitness sports. Well, we couldn't get out there tonight, Mark, but we, <laughs> I don't believe we wanted to be doing. part of the celebration. <laughs> and Bob appreciates it, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I hope he does. You know, how, how does he speak with this thing? You, you know, look, you don't look bad. You look like a million bucks, <laughs> I was just going to tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I look more like Bob or Teak the Greek at this point. <laughs> Linda has a weekend forecast coming up, and it looks pretty good. And they like what they heard on stage tonight <laughs> in Amherst.
You can't talk about Irv without talking about food. Irv even had a dish named after him over at Chef's here downtown. He did. Tell us about it. We have it right here. This is the Irv special. And uh, Keith, this is pasta packed with a punch. And I don't mean to be rude and not share it with Cindy and Bob, but you know, we're gonna have to, as you as our host, We'll maybe share this after the show. That but, sounds uh, good. Yeah, little That's when we would see him at AM Buffalo, as if the, the smells would waft from the AM Buffalo kitchen, he would be ready to have some. And I just had it for lunch. Did you? Yeah. Boy, he loved it. And he would eat over at Chef's. Uh, I remember when I worked the night shift with him for years, at least two, three nights a week. Well, yeah. and, the, and the Bills, your family, are going to make a donation to the ALS Foundation for every herb special that's sold over the next oh, several that's months. Great. Yeah. That's great. Nice. 10%. Nice. So. If ever there was any food that ended up in the newsroom, it was gone in 60 seconds <laughs> because Irv would sneak it off into his office, and that was the last you ever saw. Remember the Aunt Rosie's Loganberry that showed up? There were a few. A whole case. I and never it was saw gone. that, Keith. And that was gone. <laughs> All right, uh, John, Bobby, Cindy, thanks so much for joining us. Only half an hour goes so quickly, but um, final thought. My final thought, the one thing I always remember of her, he, he didn't have an athletic bone in his body, but he loved to win. He was a competitor and a number one newsman. He taught me a lot about the business. Cindy? Last time I saw Irv was about three years ago. I almost backed up on him. I was in Ellicottville, and I got out of the car, and we talked, and he said, you know, what a good ride I had, and he loved the town. Johnny? He was an inspiration, loved by all. I was so honored to have known him and loved him, and uh, we will miss him. Never will there be another. No. A final goodbye from Irv himself when we come back. What Irv told me last year when I went out to see him in California about the city that he called home for so long. The sunshine is great here, I kid you not. But aside from that, if I had to be anywhere, Buffalo is where I would be.
Finally tonight, we give the last word to Irv, the end of his final broadcast when he retired from 7 Eyewitness News here uh, almost 19 years ago to the day. It was New Year's Eve, 1998. Finally, yes, finally, is there anyone in the Western world who doesn't know that I'm retiring? Well, apparently there is. This email arrived on our station manager's computer a couple of days ago. It reads, quote, I noticed on the TV tonight on your channel a logo saying, Remembering Irv. I went to your internet page and there is no mention of your passing. Can you send me information on this? End quote. Well, sir, if you're watching, you'll notice that I appear to be alive. In a manner of speaking, anyway. Things have been a bit hectic recently. Now then, for the rest of you, I'd like to answer some questions I've been getting since I announced that I'm retiring. Am I planning to move? No. Am I going to write a book? No. What am I going to do with myself? Well, I'm going to kick off my shoes and goof off. Read books, go to the movies weekday afternoons, watch lots of television news, spend quality time with our children and grandchildren, and drive my wife crazy. You know, the usual stuff. <laughs> Seriously, though, friends, even though I'll no longer have a day job, I expect that I'll pop up from time to time on television and radio. And I plan to continue taking an active role in the life of our community. Now, it's time to thank some of the people without whom I would not have had the broadcast career that I had. At the top of the list are my wife and children. Their unwavering love, support, encouragement, and honest criticism have always been there during the good times and the not so good times. And a big thank you to a couple of TV station managers who fired me at the dawn of my career. If it wasn't for them, I might now be directing a cooking show in Waterloo, Iowa, or live wrestling in Parkersburg, West Virginia. I'm grateful to all of the Buffalo and Canadian newspaper columnists and radio and TV personalities who in the last few weeks have showered me with the kind of accolades normally reserved for people who break sports records or walk on the moon. None of the past four decades would have happened for me without the owners, management team, and staff of WKBW Radio and Television, who were and are the best in the business. But you, you the viewers, were the key element in whatever success I've achieved. We connected on and off the air, you and me. I can never thank you enough. You made all of my dreams come true. May all of yours come true as well. Thank you, and good night.